the um, beginnings of the Laurel and Hardy team. And my notes have it that uh, at the age of about 13, you started with a juvenile pantomime company. Yes, uh, that was in 1906. Yes. Now, how did you get started? How old were you then? I came to, uh, to the States in 1910. Mm-hmm. So I started in 1906 with leaving Cardwell. And I was 20 years when I arrived in uh, 1910. So you were about 16 years of age about when 16, you started. 16, yes. Now, was this your first experience on the stage? Well, no. My dad had several theaters around the north of England. And uh, I dabbled around with uh, some nights in the box office, some nights checking programs and chocolates in the office uh -huh. and what have you. Just general utility, message boy, and do a little typing of letters and what have you. What kind of theaters were these, Mr. Law? Uh, dramatic, mostly. Mm -hmm. My dad was a dramatic uh, showman. My mother was quite a dramatic actress in that time. And my dad, although basically had been a comedian in these dramatic shows, so I kind of followed in his footsteps as far as that goes. Well, then they had no objection. Your parents had no objection to your interest well, in no, the Well, I, no, uh, my dad did want me to follow the front of the theater. Mm -hmm. He'd had some pretty hard times, I imagine, during his yes. struggles in early days. and He didn't feel he wanted me to tackle all that. So uh, he had in mind for me to, to uh, be in the front of the house instead of backstage. Well, when you made your debut with the um, juvenile pantomime company in 1906... Six, yes. What did you do with them? How did well, you make that step from the front to the Before stage? that, I, I used to do uh, vaudeville appearances, unbeknownst to my dad, <laughs> see. And uh, I had the hankering for the bad, go and see music hall shows uh -huh. and what have you. I, I think, uh, frankly, that I had a, quite a lisp at that time. Uh -huh. And uh, my voice was kind of broken, and I was just ill-fitted for anything but a comic. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that was my fault. <laughs> I see. So uh, anyway, he found out that I, that was my desire, and he immediately got me a job with, uh, with Levy and Cardwell's juvenile pantomime. So I, I did various jobs in it. I was assistant stage manager, and I used to give out handbills in the daytime, go around the schools, take the boss's mail to his home, and he gave me the return sheet to check up on the the night before takings, and then I'd assist in the baggage getting out of the theater on Saturday night, and also play a part in the show. Now, what kind of a... Uh... What did you do in the show? Did you do anything well, with the uh, character you later developed? Well, the star of the show at that time was uh, Wee Georgie Wood. <laughs> uh, he became a very prominent figure in show business. Yes. He's now in the newspaper business, I understand. Is that right? In fact, I saw him uh, last year. He was out here for a trip. And uh, in the story of the Sleeping Beauty, which is the pantomime, uh, he had two gollywogs that followed him around. It was a kind of a dream story. Mm -hmm. He went to bed and the nurse read the... Uh, he played kind of a baby. And the nurse uh, put him to bed and read the story to him. And all his toys in the room, which two of them were gollywogs, all came to life when he went into his dream. And we followed him through the show. Hmm. Wherever he was, the gollywogs were always with him. I see. And, and saved him what from you did dangers there. and what have you, you know. Do you, uh, you don't happen to remember anything about the kind of costume that you wore for this? Well, the typical doll of the uh, gollywog doll was blue pants or red pants and a blue coat or a red coat and a big black fuzzy wig, black mm -hmm. face with big white eyes and white mouth, just like a... 
a rag doll. Like a rag doll. Might, so, yeah, mm -hmm. white gloves and so forth. Now, how long did you stay with this company, this uh, juvenile pantomime <coughs> company? I stayed one season with them. Mm -hmm. No, I stayed two. Two seasons. Yeah, we played first uh, Sleeping Beauty, and then the following show was The House of Jack Built. Mm -hmm. Now, did you go to the Fred Carno company directly from this pantomime no, company? No, uh... I then uh, got a good taste of the business, you might say, from every angle, mm -hmm. and I decided I still wanted to go out on my own as a, a boy comedian, which was quite the thing those days. Yes. There were several of them. So uh, I made ventures in vaudeville variety, as we call it over there, but I wasn't too successful. So uh, finally my dad had one of his shows one of his sketches running in variety on the uh, Moss Empires. So hmm. he sent me along to get further uh, training training in the business. Mm -hmm. So I kind of was a kind of a bit of a, an assistant manager, as you might say, with the show. So after that, uh, I continued again to try out my luck as a boy comedian. And I didn't get too far with that. What do you suppose was wrong? What was wrong with your boy? Oh, I was just an awkward age, and the material, of course, which is basically the 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 only the thing that's in the backbone of it, right? Right. Uh, so finally, my dad got me this job with Fred Carno. So I joined the show. Uh, which Chaplin was with. Yes, I understand that... Um, now, is this correct? Uh, my notes would also indicate that um, you were billed for a long time as Chaplin's understudy. I was his understudy. I wasn't billed as you such. You were not billed as such? No. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, just before we left for America, a few weeks before, they wanted to put on a new show. So we rehearsed the show all week, and we had an opening date the following Monday. And on the Friday of the, of the rehearsals, Chaplin turned the part down. Why was that? He didn't like it. Uh, it was a show called Jimmy the Fearless. So uh, well, Carnot he... came down to see the rehearsal, and Chaplin uh, refused to play the part. We had an opening date the following Monday. So at the last minute, Carnot put me into the part. Now, had you been understudying this part? Uh, to this no, part? it was a brand new show. Brand new We'd show. We'd all been rehearsing, you see. Uh -huh. So uh, I had to switch parts. Well, I was only one of the gang as far as that. So uh, I went on. Uh, we opened at the Hippodrome Theatre in West Ealing in London. And the show was quite a success. So I was congratulated by everybody and what have you. Well, Chaplin sat in front for two or three shows and decided then he liked the part. So I was thrown back in the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chaplin was under contract and he had to pay him, so... But his stature was not great in those days. Uh, well, uh, And he was a relatively young man then, too, Oh, yes, he? certainly. He was only a year younger than I was. A year older. A year than older. Mm -hmm. But he was under contract, and they oh, yes, they wanted yes. him to to earn his pay, I suppose. Oh yes. Sure. So he got the part back. Well, he went in and played the part, following me. Uh huh. Now, how long did you stay in England with Fred Carnot before you came to America? With well, it was just a couple of months or three months after that that we came to the States, mm -hmm. nineteen ten. Now, this was the company from which Max Sennett finally took Chaplin for that's films right. in Hollywood. That's right. Now, when Chaplin left for Hollywood, yeah. did anything more happen to you with regard to what Chaplin yes, was doing? Yes, I was... Uh, they had uh, further contracts to play in Philadelphia for 12 weeks. So, uh, I was notified that I was going to take over mm -hmm. and play the part. But the outfit that were running the uh, theaters, the Nixon Nerdlinger Company, uh, refused to take me. They wanted. Uh... They wanted uh, another comedian, a principal comedian from London. Oh, I see. They wanted a, a London star name. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, I lost out again. Hmm. However, this fellow came over and uh, the show was a terrible flop. He just didn't fit. The man came over from England. A new comedian, yes. And with him, the show did not make it either. No, so the show folded in three weeks and returned to England. But I remained here. 